Welcome to a Dry Bones Ministries special podcast series on the consecration to St. Joseph. My name is Father Adam Potter, and today is day 32. We'll continue our journey today by looking at St. Joseph as the protector of the Holy Church. Further, as we come closer, at this point one day away from our consecration day, we'll meditate on our act of consecration and a special attention given to this last paragraph, this last request that we make to Jesus to allow Joseph to uh, accept us as his children. If you're ready, let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, Grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolations. Through Christ our, our Lord. Amen. Our act of consecration to St. Joseph. I consecrate myself to you, good St. Joseph, as my spiritual father. I choose you to rule my soul and to teach me the interior life, the life hidden away with Jesus, Mary, and yourself. Above all, I want to imitate the humble silence with which you shrouded Jesus, Mary, and yourself, and even your own happiness. For me, everything lies in that, total abnegation like our Lord in his hidden life, making the world forget me by my silence and my practice of the common life. I consecrate myself to you as my guide and model in all my duties, so that I may learn to fulfill them with meekness and humility with meekness toward my brethren, my neighbor, and all with whom I come in contact, with humility toward myself and simplicity before God. I choose you, good saint, as my counselor, my confidant, my protector, in all my difficulties and trials. I do ask to be spared crosses and sufferings, but only from self-love, which might vitiate their value by making me vain over them. I shall honor and love I shall honor and love and serve you with Mary, my mother. Never shall I separate her name from yours in my love. Gladly would I be like you, St. Joseph, a poor carpenter, unknown and despised, food for the roots of the tree, the master's gardener who never leaves the garden, who knows nothing but his plants, who loves only his flowers and sees only their fruits, and dies in the corner of his hut in the arms of Jesus and Mary. We do not know the place of your burial, so we cannot honor your remains. You leave behind you only your mantle of poverty and humility. O Jesus, give me Joseph for a father, as you have given me Mary as a mother. Fill me with devotion, confidence, and filial love. Listen to my prayer, please. I know that you will. Already I feel more devout, more full of hope and confidence in good St. Joseph, your foster father and my adopted Father. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So good to be with you on this 32nd day, knocking on the door of our consecration day tomorrow. You all got your money's worth yesterday with uh, the longest of our podcast videos um, throughout the whole series. So promise to be uh, to the point today, and especially in considering the this title of Joseph as protector of the Holy Church, it flows. It flows from him being the terror of demons and how he is the protector of, of the church, where we see as Christ being the head and Mary is representing the body. So let's first just take a, a brief look at our last plea in our act of consecration, where we'll say tomorrow with the intention of this full entrustment and giving of ourselves over to Jesus through Joseph. But we're going to pray tomorrow at the very end. O Jesus, give me Joseph for a father, as you have given me Mary as a mother. It's really important that uh, we recognize this prayer ultimately goes right to the heart of Jesus, right to his most sacred heart, and that we know that this desire isn't just something that we long for, but that it's something that he longs to give us, to truly answer our prayers. And so how is that desire being shown? Well, it's in comparison to the great gift of that Jesus gave us from the cross of Mary, our mother, that it's there in John chapter 19, 
that we see standing at the cross is Mary, his mother, and the disciple whom he loved. We know that today is being John the Beloved, and yet he remains anonymous as only known as the beloved disciple, the disciple whom Jesus loved, which by extension is you. It is that you are the disciple whom Jesus loves. And so in Jesus, in his last dying words on the cross, says to you, behold your mother. This most precious gift, right, right from the heart of Jesus, of his mom to you, to be able to take in. And the beloved disciples' response is, of course, just truly magnanimous. From that hour, he took Mary into his home. The great reception of the gift by the beloved disciple that we might take Mary into our homes, into our hearts. And so we pray, Jesus, give me Joseph for a father as you have given me Mary as a mother. It's in this that we cry out that Mary is this most incredible gift, this relationship with her. Give me also Joseph, whom Jesus never explicitly gave to us. And yet, in just the economy, the way that we see Jesus working, we know that he wants to share his love with Joseph with each and every one of us. So we go on, fill me with devotion, confidence, and filial love. Listen to my prayer, please. I know that you will. This to me sounds straight from the heart of a child that isn't demanding, but is confident. Lord, I know that you will answer me those, this most reasonable request to give me Joseph, that I might have a greater devotion, a greater confidence, and just filial love that for the rest of my days, even long after my act of consecration, I can continue to fall more and more in love with Joseph. And hopefully you've been, been able to see that already through these 32 days now that I have grown in love and just thinking about him or finding images or statues of him. I'm brought to just a greater depth of who he is and who he wants to be for me. And that's why we can pray. Already I feel more devout, more full of hope and confidence in good St. Joseph, your foster father and my adopted father. Amen. So that's our act of consecration that hopefully it's been helpful going through in these uh, last eight days. And then especially tomorrow in our ninth and final day, we'll be able to say it with a sense of full knowledge and full intention. I know what I'm praying for. I've been able to sit with it, meditate on it. And I realize this isn't just something that I want, but especially I realize now it's something that the Lord wants, that the Lord has ordained this, willed this for you, for me to have Joseph as even more of a father, as a protector, and a guide. And then just one point on our day today, our petition is, Joseph, protector of the Holy Church, pray for us. It does, it goes without saying, we need Joseph in this way, to truly be that protector. That it is under his cloak that we see not just a cloak, but we see uh, hmm, truly a castle right? <laughs> a safeguard, right? That it's under his cloak that we can be protected and that we see in that cloak um, also with him a sword. Well, it looks like a lily, but it's a sword. It's a spear ready to do battle and to protect us. And if you remember at the very beginning, I started off and this is how Father Calloway closes it with reference to how blessed Pope Pius IX called upon St. Joseph to be this patron, this protector of the universal church in a way that he's never been claimed or called upon to be before. But in this way that I just found truly true to the heart of Joseph, he's almost standing in the background, humble, silent, as he usually does, waiting to step forward, right? But he's waiting in all humility to be invited to it, just as he was waiting for the angel Gabriel to call him to take Mary and the child into your own home. He's waiting for he's waiting for us to call upon him to be the protector. And that Pius the Ninth says, Now therefore, when in these most troublesome times the church is beset by enemies on every side, and is weighed down by calamities so heavy that ungodly men assert that the gates of hell have at length prevailed against her. 
the venerable prelates of the whole Catholic world have presented to the sovereign pontiff their own petitions and those of the faithful committed to their charge, praying that he would deign to constitute St. Joseph, patron of the church. And at this, their prayer and desire was renewed by them even more earnestly at the sacred ecumenical council of the Vatican. Doesn't that sound like it could be said by our Holy Father today in these most troublesome times with our enemies at, at our very doors in a time when so many people have said, I know the Lord promised the gates of hell will not prevail against her, but it seems like they've prevailed. That we might call upon St. Joseph to truly be our protector. I love it that when Pius IX does this, it's only nine short years later, in 79, in Knock, Ireland, that Joseph shows up. He appears for really the first time. He appears with Mary, with Jesus, and John, the beloved disciple, <laughs> um, in a way that I just hear him crying out, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to be called upon. I'm waiting to be invited into this battle, to be the shield, to be the soldier, to be everything that I know I have been ordained to be. And right now, we just look around at our world, we look around at our church, and the attack is not just from the outside, the attack truly is from the inside. And the lack of faithfulness from the very top to the very bottom of the church, that we know we need this protection. And, and maybe you might say, like, well, if Joseph was really protecting us, then we wouldn't be here. And yet here's where I, I just want to close with maybe this thought. Joseph's protection is truly in the heart, in the will of God. And that a lot of times, protection is not just an absence of adversity. A true protection is not just a relinquishing of all suffering or pain. But I think you as, as parents often know that looking at your children, there's often trials and sufferings that children need to be able to go through on their own and that your protection as their mom, as their dad, as their guardian is not just to be a helicopter parent or as it's been called today, a Zamboni parent, <laughs> the Zamboni machine that would go ahead of their, of their child to remove any sort of obstacle that might trip them up, right? That you would actually allow them to be tried, allow them to be purified and the protection means but I would never allow them to go too far beyond what they can handle. And that this is the same confidence we can have in Joseph, that he is protecting us. And he's protecting us in a way now that if we hadn't called upon him before, how much worse off might we, might we be? So let's turn now. Joseph is in the background just waiting for you and me personally to be invited, called, summoned into this battle to be our protector and lead us closer and closer to the heart of his son, Jesus, in the heart of our mother, Mary. The litany of St. Joseph, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Noble offspring of David, pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God, pray for us. Chaste guardian of the Virgin, pray for us. Foster father of the Son of God, pray for us. Zealous defender of Christ, pray for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph, most just, pray for us. Joseph, most chaste, pray for us. Joseph, most prudent, pray for us. Joseph, most courageous, pray for us. Joseph, most obedient, pray for us. Joseph, most faithful, pray for us. Mirror of patience, pray for us. Lover of poverty, pray for us. Model of workmen, pray for us. Glory of domestic life, pray for us. Guardian of virgins, pray for us. Pillar of families, 
pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted, pray for us. Hope of the sick, pray for us. Patron of the dying, pray for us. Terror of demons, pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church, pray for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household and Prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose Blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Through the intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary and St. Joseph, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, as always, if you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, leave us a comment. If you're interested in supporting Dry Bones Ministries or finding out more about the work that is going on, especially here in Pittsburgh, please check out our website at drybonespgh.org. I'm praying for you. Tomorrow is the day. Make, make sure you have um, those things set up, especially uh, a good confession. If you had a chance to write out your act of consecration, it's so praiseworthy. If you found a mass to be able to go, especially one that has an image or a statue where you can make a true entrustment of yourself to St. Joseph, all the better. And finally, that you would find a way to celebrate, to truly just give thanks to God for the great gift of, of Joseph. Please pray for me. Pray for one another. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And St. Joseph, pray for us.